This is Annabelle Gaberti and you are listening to Lawfully Creative, my podcast to talk with professionals in the creative industries, to hear their stories, what inspires their creation, what decisions change their careers, what relationships influence their work. Today's episode is brought to you by Crefovi, our London and Paris-based law firm focused on advising the creative industries. Subscribe to our podcast, Lawfully Creative, or catch up with our original shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, TuneIn, and Overcast. Please do leave a review and rating about our podcast to encourage others to discover our curated content. Thanks! Today, Sunday, the 11th of February 2018, I went to the fashion trade show Pure in London and presented a talk on how to make your fashion business GDPR compliant by May 2018. And I find the substance of such talk so important and essential to all the creative industries that I am going to record this talk now through a special podcast focusing on the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR. The GDPR is upon us. So what is it? How is it going to impact you and your fashion business or any other type of creative businesses? What do you need to do in order to become GDPR compliant? There is not a moment to waste as the stakes are very high. And since becoming GDPR compliant will definitely bring competitive advantages to your creative business. In April 2016, after more than four years of discussion and negotiation, the European Parliament and Council adopted the General Data Protection Re Regulation, GDPR. The GDPR repeals the Directive on the Protection of Individuals with regards to the processing of personal data and on the free movement of such data, which was adopted back in 1995. This 20-year-old directive was no longer fit for purpose, as the amount of digital information businesses create, capture, process, and store has vastly increased. Today, data ownership seriously impacts competition on any given market. By collecting more data, a business has more scope to improve its products and goods, which attracts more users and generates even more data, and so on. So it's a virtuous cycle. Data assets are today at least as important as other intangible assets, such as trademarks, copyright, designs, patents to companies. The stakes are way higher today as far as data ownership control and processing are concerned, and the GDPR addresses that data flow in the 21st century, as we all engage with technology more and more. Moreover, many legal cases brought up in various EU member states, European Union member states, have highlighted the severe weaknesses and gaps in providing satisfactory, strong, and homogeneous protection of personal data relating to EU citizens and controlled by companies and businesses operating in the European Union. For example, the European Court of Justice decision Costeja versus Google, which was published on the 26th of November 2014, highlights this issue that EU citizens' data is not always protected adequately. Through this decision Costeja versus Google, the European Court of Justice qualified Google, which is a search engine operator, as we all know, as a data controller. And because Google is a data controller, the onus is on Google to maintain and manage such stored data on EU citizens. Through that, the right to be forgotten was institutionalized through this uh, Costeja versus Google a European Court of Justice decision. More on this later. One of the causes of the GDPR is also that some data breaches 
at and cyber attacks of thousands of international businesses such as Sony Pictures, Yahoo, LinkedIn, Equifax, Uber, as well as EU national companies such as Talk Talk, make the news consistently and on a very regular basis, dramatically affecting the financial and moral well-being of millions of consumers whose personal data was hacked because of his data breaches. But GDPR will be immediately enforceable in the 28 member states of the European Union without any transposition required, unlike the 1995 directive. So this will provide a standard and level playing field in the whole of the EU. When will the GDPR enter into force? On the 25th of May 2018. The GDPR will be of significant impact to EU business owners and there is not a minute to spare to prepare for compliance with a new set of complex and lengthy rules from the GDPR. So what is at stake? Which organisations are impacted by the GDPR? A lot is at stake. All businesses, organisations or entities which operate in the EU, including administrations or any other entities which are headquartered outside of the EU but collects, holds and processes personal data of EU citizens must be GDPR compliant by the 25th of May 2018. Potentially, the GDPR may apply to every website and application on a global basis. As most, if not all multinationals, have customers, employees and business partners in the European Union, they all must become GDPR compliant. However, even startups and small and medium enterprises, SMEs, must be GDPR compliant, as they will almost undoubtedly collect, hold, or process personal data of EU citizens, such as customers, prospects, employees, contractors, suppliers. The GDPR has a strong enforcement regime of very heavy financial sanctions to be imposed on businesses which are not compliant. Indeed, some fines of an amount up to 4% of the annual worldwide turnover, or 20 million euros, whichever is the greatest, could be levied on bad players. This is way larger than the actual fines capped at £500,000, for example, for the UK Data Protection Authority, the DPA, which is the Information Commissioner Office. In France, the fines are at an even lower rate of um, that can be levied by the CNIL. A maximum of €300,000 capped penalty uh, that the French Data Protection Authority, the Commission Nationale Informatique et Liberté, the CNIL, can currently inflict on businesses. From the 25th of May 2018, both these uh, uh, data protection authorities, the CNIL and the UK, and any other data protection authority in the 28 member states of the European Union uh, will be able to levy some fines of up to 20 million euros or 4% of the annual worldwide turnover of a company, whichever is the greatest. So what are the GDPR provisions about? The GDPR provides 99 articles setting out the rights of individuals and obligations placed on organizations within its scope. Compared with the 1995 directive, here are the new concepts brought by the GDPR. The first new concept from the GDPR is privacy by design. It means that businesses must take a proactive and preventive approach in relation to the protection of privacy and personal data. For example, a business that limits the quantity of data collected or anonymizes such data does comply with a privacy by design principle. This obligation of privacy by design implies that businesses must integrate by all appropriate technical means, the security of personal data at the inception of a applications or business procedures. The second new GDPR concept is accountability. It means that the data controller, i.e. the institution which uh, controls and gathers all the data, as well as the data processor, which is the entity which processes suggest, such data on behalf of a data controller must take appropriate legal, organizational and technical measures allowing 
them to comply with the GDPR. So both the data controller and the data processor are jointly and severally accountable. They must be able to demonstrate the execution of such measures in all transparency and at any given point in time, both to their respective DPAs, data protection authorities, and to the natural persons whose data has been treated by them. These measures must be proportionate to the risk, i.e. the prejudice that would be caused to EU citizens in case of inappropriate use of their data. In addition to privacy by design and accountability, a new concept brought by the GDPR is the Privacy Impact Assessment, also known as PIA. The business in charge of treating and processing personal data, as well as its subcontractors and contractors, must execute an analysis called Privacy Impact Assessment, PIA, relating to the protection of personal data. Businesses must do a PIA, Privacy Risk Assessment, on their data assets in order to track and map risks inherent to each data process and treatment put in place according to their plausibility and seriousness. Next to those risks, the PIA sets out the list of organizational, IT, physical, and legal measures taken to address and minimize those risks. The Privacy Impact Assessment aims at checking the adequacy of such measures and, if these measures fail that test, at determining proportionate measures to address those uncovered risks and to ensure the business becomes GDPR compliant. In addition to the PIA, certain companies must now have a data protection officer, which is a new concept also brought by the GDPR. The GDPR requires for a data protection officer, i.e. a DPO, in order to ensure the compliance of treatment of personal data by public administrations, businesses, which data treatments present a strong risk of breach of privacy. The Data Protection Officer is the spokesperson of the organization in relation to personal data. It is the go-to point of contact for the Data Protection Authority in relation to data proce processing compliance of, the, of the, this company. But it is also the go-to point of contact for individuals, EU citizens, whose data has been collected so that they can exercise their rights. Data Protection Officers must inform the interlocutors of any data breaches which may arise in the organization and also analyze the impact of such breaches. The fifth new concept brought by the GDPR is profiling. Profiling is an automated processing of personal data, processing of data, for example, through a bot or a robot or artificial intelligence. This um, automated processing of personal data allows the construction of complex information about a particular person, such as her preferences, her productivity at work, or her whereabouts. This type of data processing can generate automated decision-making which may trigger legal consequences without any human intervention. In this way, profiling constitutes a risk to civil liberties. This is why businesses doing profiling must limit its risks and guarantee the rights of individuals subjected to such profiling, in particular by allowing them to request human intervention and or contest the automated decision. Also, the GDPR puts into law the right to be forgotten, mentioned before in relation to the Costeja versus Google judgment of the European Court of Justice. Now, with the GDPR, the right to be forgotten is implemented in the law, in the GDPR. It allows an individual to avoid that information about his or her past interferes with his or her actual life. In the digital world, that right encompasses the right to erasure and the right to dereferencing, delinking of URL links, which show up in, uh, in Google rankings, for example. The person can have potentially harmful content erased from a digital network, and the person can dissociate a keyword, such as her first name and family name, from certain web pages on a search engine. Finally, some 
Other individuals' rights have been made law in the GDPR. The GDPR supplements the right to be forgotten by firmly putting EU citizens back in control of their personal data, substantially reinforcing the consent obligation to data processing. Those citizen rights encompass the right to access data, the right to rectify data, the right to limit data processing, the right to data portability, and the right to oppose data processing. Also, there are some information obligations on uh, uh, businesses about citizens' rights. In view of all of you above, I'm sure that you will share the idea with me that the GDPR is quite a mouthful. I mean, this is a uh, pretty tough set of obligations and regulations which are now going to bound EU-based uh, businesses as well as um, administrations and also any other international business that does uh, trade in the European Union. And so is there a silver lining to the GDPR? Well, yes, for several reasons. The first being that it is an opportunity to man manage those precious data assets. Compliance with GDPR should be viewed by businesses as an opportunity as much as an obligation. With data being even more important in an organization today, this is a great opportunity to take stock of what data your company has and how you can, you can get most advantage of it. The key tenet of the GDPR is that it will give you the ability to find data in your organization that is highly sensitive and of high value and ensure that such data is protected adequately from risks and data breaches. Moreover, the GDPR lowers formalities and creates a one-stop DPA. Indeed, the GDPR withdraws the obligations of prior declaration to one's data protection authority before any data processing and replaces these formalities with a mandatory creation and management of a data processing register. Such data processing register is managed in-house by the business or administration. It doesn't have to be provided to the DPA. The GDPR also sets up a one-stop shop DPA, uh, Data Protection Authority. In case of absence of specific national legislation, a DPA located in the EU member state in which the organization has its main or unique establishment will be in charge of controlling compliance with the GDPR. So businesses will determine their respective Data Protection Authority, DPA, with respect to the place of establishment of a management functions, as far as the supervision of data processing is concerned, which will allow to identify the main establishment, including when a sole company manages the operations of a whole group. So, for example, a um, pan-European business such as H&M, based in uh, Sweden, headquartered in Sweden, will have operations probably in all the other 27 member states of the European Union, including in the UK, in France. There are some H&M stores and, um, and companies in all these countries. However, the main place of establishment of H&M being Sweden, the one-stop data protection authority that will be the H&M's uh, DPA will actually be the Swedish data protection authority. This unique one-stop DPA will allow companies to substantially sa save time and money by simplifying their processes. They will just have to report to one DPA as opposed to 28 DPAs. That, that's quite a great improvement. Also, the GDPR unifies the regulations and allows some easier data transfers. GDPR favors the European data market as well as the digital economy. It creates a favorable economic environment. For data, the GDPR reinforces the protection of personal data and civil liberties, that we already know, but it also allows businesses to substantially reduce costs of processing data incurred in the 28 EU member states, because organizations will no longer have to comply with multiple national regulations for the collection, harvesting, transfer, and storing of data that they use. Since the data will comply with legislations applicable in all the 28 EU member states, it will become possible to exchange it and it will have the same value in different countries, 
while currently data has different prices depending on the legislation it complies with, as well as different costs for the companies that collect it. Moreover, the GDPR provides an extended geographical scope for fair competition and by fair competition. The scope of a GDPR extends to companies headquartered outside of the European Union, but which intend to market goods and services in the European market, as long as such companies put in place some processes and treatments of personal data relating to EU citizens. So potentially, a Middle East business would be liable to comply with the GDPR. A US business, an Asian business, would be uh, liable to comply with GDPR provided that they actually process and store personal data about EU citizens. European companies, therefore, which may be viewed as being subject to strict and potentially expensive rules, will not be penalised by international competition on the EU single market, because even external players will have to comply with the GDPR. EU businesses may buy from non-EU companies some data, which is compliant with the GDPR provisions, therefore making the data market wider. So there will be a streamlining of um, processing of data and also there will be a widened geographical market of data. The GDPR will also open digital services to competition. There's going to be a right to the portability of data implemented by this GDPR. And this right of to portability of data will allow EU citizens subjected to data treatment and processing to gather this data in an exploitable format or to transfer such data to another data controller if this is technically possible. This way, the client will be able to change digital service providers such as email provider, pictures provider, without having to manually retrieve all the data during a fastidious and time-consuming process. Therefore, by lifting such technical barriers, the GDPR makes the market more fluid and offers to users enhanced digital mobility. Digital service providers will therefore evolve in a more competitive market, inciting them in providing better priced and higher quality services as their clients will no longer be hostages to their initial provider. Thanks, data portability. Also, another silver lining to the GDPR is that the European Committee on Data Protection and the European institutions will propose some certifications and labels in order to certify compliance with the GDPR of data processes performed by businesses. So having a label or a certification is a cashable recognition and a true asset for the brand image of a company. These labels and certifications will also become a strong commercial and marketing tool in order to gain prospects' trust and to win their loyalty. So there's definitely a silver lining to the GDPR. What actionable steps to take to become GDPR compliant? Well, there is not a moment to lose to implement the following steps because we have barely four months to implement the GDPR in uh, our respective EU companies, businesses, administrations. So what can be done? in a pragmatic way to implement this GDPR? Well, some of the actionable steps are as follows. First, you need to decide in your organization who has the ownership of implementing the GDPR. Also, you need to assign such ownership to the best suited department or team. Is it going to be the legal team? Is it going to be the compliance team, the technology team? Who is going to manage this whole GDPR implementation in your organization? You will have to check that. You will have to decide that in view of the corporate structure of your business. Secondly, you need to, yes, with your one stop data protection authority, as several of these data protection authorities, DPAs, have prepared useful explanatory information or guidance to comply with the GDPR, such as the Information Commissioner Office in the UK the CNIL in France, and also the Data Protection Commissioner in Ireland. Just look up their websites and you will see that your DPA has um, already provided a lot of useful tools and documentation on how to take some pragmatic steps to implement the, um, the DPA in your EU member state. By the way, the Data Protection Commissioner in Ireland is the DPA of digital giants such as Google, Facebook, and Twitter. So if you want to make sure that these big multinational 
digital companies are compliant with the, uh, the GDPR, just reach out to the Data Protection Commissioner. Thirdly, you need to draft a map of data processes in your organization and identify the gaps in GDPR compliance in relation to these various processes. We at our law firm, Crefovi, have drafted some detailed documents on how to make this mapping of data processes and treatments, and we can support you in identifying the gaps in GDPR compliance. Don't hesitate to reach out. Another step which can be taken is to value the various data processes and treatments that you've just drafted a map of and assess which of these data processes and treatments are high risk and you should also make a list of your high risk data assets then you need to execute a privacy impact assessment pia on those high risk data assets such as the human resources data your customers data your contractors' data. Crefervi, again, supports companies in performing PIAs and in checking the efficiency of the security and protection measures thanks to the execution of intrusion tests. So don't hesitate to reach out to draft and um, test this PIA. Then you need to implement some legal, technical, organizational and physical measures to lower the risks on those data assets and in order to become GDPR compliant. Your whole organization needs to have a 360 degree approach so that all the various departments and teams work together to implement the GDPR and protect those data assets from risks. Not only that, but you also need to ensure that your contractors and subcontractors and suppliers have put compliance security measures in place. And you need, therefore, to send them a list of points to check and, therefore, to fill out such checklist of points and send it back to you to make sure that all your contractors, subcontractors and suppliers are also in compliance with GDPR. You also need to do a privacy awareness training for your employees as they must understand that personal data is anything that can be linked directly to an individual. There will be some consequences if such employees break the G breach the GDPR provisions and steal personal data. You as an organization will be responsible, even if it's one of your employees or one of your contractors or suppliers who makes the breach. The DPA will hold you accountable. It would be a good idea as well to develop a bring your own device policy, also called BYOD, bring your own device policy, and enforce it within your organization and your employees, since your business is accountable for all data user information stored in the cloud and accessible from both corporate devices and personal devices. Also, when employees leave or are terminated, you need to make sure that you have included BYOD in your offboarding process so that leaving staff lose access to company confidential data immediately on their devices. Moreover, you need to check and or redraft the information notices and confidentiality policies in order that they set out the new information required by GDPR. So, for example, on your websites, there uh, should be some terms and conditions of use of your website, as well as some privacy and cookies policies. Well, those two web pages need to be reviewed and um, amended in order to comply with the GDPR provisions. We at Crefovi regularly draft such uh, terms and conditions of use of websites and uh, privacy and cookies policies. And we are currently in the process of redrafting and amending uh, a lot of our clients, uh, TNCs and, um, and privacy and cookies policy in order to make them compliant with GDPR. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We can um, uh, support you in this. In addition, you need to put in place some automated mechanisms in order to obtain explicit consent from EU citizens, especially when your business deals with behavioral data collection or behavioral advertising or any other form of profiling. That means in plain English that you must be able to prove to your one-stop DPA that you have explicitly obtained the consent from any EU user to the collecting of a data. You need to have some proof, some evidence that you have provided that you have been provided with such explicit consent. 
such as, for example, a form which has been filled out by the EU citizen, which sets out clearly that um, he or she has consented to the collection of his or her data. Finally, you need to put in place a solid management plan in case some personal data breaches happen. These man management plans will allow you to comply with the mandatory requirement to notify your data protection authority within 72 hours of a data breach. So look, please don't fret, keep calm and carry on, and step by step implement uh, the actionable steps we just gave you to be compliant with the GDPR. Don't hesitate to reach out in case you need support in drafting your PIA and um, amending your terms and conditions and um, of use and uh, uh, privacy and cookies policies. We are here and good luck. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Lawfully Creative, produced by Crefervy Studios. Subscribe to our podcast or catch up with our original shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, TuneIn and Overcast. Please do leave a review and rating about our podcast, Lawfully Creative, to encourage others to discover our curated content. Thank you.